Ted Koppel uh, put together um, a clip on CBS's Sunday morning uh, where he was talking about uh, the media and how it's changed. And in it, he talked about the role of opinion media and he had Sean Hannity on. And it led to a significant blowback and drama. Sean Hannity was not happy about how this was edited according to his claims. First, I wanna show you what aired on CBS. Then I'll uh, tell you who I think is right and wrong here. Let's watch. He has from the first promoted Donald Trump and a highly partisan agenda. Honestly, I think liberalism has to be defeated. Socialism must be defeated in a political sense. This is not a, we don't want a revolution in well, this what, country. What more do you want? You got the White House, you got the House, you got the now. Senate. Okay. And then we have angry snowflakes and then we've got a democratic establishment. I say the press in this country is out to destroy this president. Free of the fairness doctrine, Rush Limbaugh and conservative talk radio exploded into a political force of nature. Now you take conservative talk radio, move that forward to tribal cable television, and then layer onto that email and social media. And all of a sudden, we live in a world where people can get information and believe it's absolutely true and not have to get any kind of opposing point of view. And once they believe it, they will always believe it even if it's utterly false. We have to give some credit to the American people that they're somewhat intelligent and that they know the difference between an opinion show and a news show. Yeah. You're, not, you're cynical, look at that. Yeah, I am yeah. cynical because, uh, you know. You think we're bad for America? You think yeah. I'm bad for America? Yeah. You do. In the in the long haul, I think you really? and all these opinion That's shows. That's sad, Ted. No, you know why? That's sad. Because you're very good at what you do, and because you have you have attracted a significantly you more influential. Well, let me finish short. the sentence. Let me finish the sentence I'm before you do that. With all due respect. You yes. Take you have phone. you have attracted people who are determined that ideology is more important than facts. Ooh, so that was a bit cathartic listening to Ted Koppel say that to Sean Hannity's face and a lot of people enjoyed that. But I might have a surprising take on that in a second. So first let me go to Sean Hannity's reaction. He was enraged, there was nonstop tweeting. He's developed a lot of Donald Trump's habits including saying sad in the middle of an interview there. But anyway, he, he tweeted out here, he said, fake edited news at CBS News, released an unedited 45 minute interview so people can see the BS games you play in the edit room, I dare you, okay? And then he went on to tweet again on a similar note, fake edited news, I did about a 45 minute interview with CBS, they ran less than two. Why did Ted cut out many examples of media bias? Okay, now let's pause there for a second. Uh, now, I'm gonna score one for Ted Koppel there because that's not how these things work. They're put together a package and they have a lot of different interviews and they put it in, in an order and they tell a story. Uh, and so their job on CBS Sunday morning is not to go, okay, now here's our story on this. And by the way, here's a 45 minutes of unedited footage from Sean Hannity. Right, that's not really how it works. Now, on the other hand, I think that if Sean Hannity is challenging them to put the 45 minute unedited version out in the public by putting it online, well, I don't see the harm in that. So I bet you that the rest of the interview is even more embarrassing for Sean Hannity. Cuz I don't agree with him overall, I don't agree with his politics. And and so I don't think there's harm in it. Unless Sean Hannity is right and you were playing with the tape in some way to misrepresent him, which I, I'd be surprised they, that they were, okay? But now let's go to the heart of the issue, which is, is Ted Koppel right to criticize Sean Hannity for doing an opinion show? Well, Hannity had one tweet about that too, and here's what he said. You see, if you pay attention to Ted, was if you pay attention, Ted was saying all opinion shows are bad for America. But he was saying this while giving us his opinion, hashtag hypocrisy. Well, that point seems pretty fair. Um, it is Ted Koppel's opinion that these shows are bad. Now, let me note for the record my obvious bias here, which is not that I'm a progressive and hence don't like Sean Hannity. That's also clear, but 
No, my obvious bias here is that I also do an opinion show. We present to you facts, then we present our perspective on it. And so I guess Ted Koppel wants us to present the facts and then go, and then I don't really care what happens after that. And I don't agree with Ted Koppel. So I'm gonna score the debate overall for Sean Hannity. Now, if Ted Koppel was saying, hey, but Fox News is not fair and balanced, so you guys are lying about that. That's a super fair point, and I would agree with that. If Fox News just dropped fair and balanced and said, here's our conservative take, I would say, God bless, it's a free country. They get to have their conservative take, we have our progressive take, and everybody has takes all in the middle, okay? So I don't see anything wrong with that. Now, the Ted Cobbles of the world would say, well, you're telling people what you think. And news people shouldn't do that. They should just simply robotically report the news. But when you do that, a lot of times, and this is what's developed in the mainstream media, is you become stenographers and you turn into he said, she said. And you forget that you're supposed to be objective and you wind up being neutral. So neutrality is, well, the Democrats say that that Trump was trying to kill Obamacare and that's why they fought him. Trump says that he didn't lose that battle. In fact, it was the Democrats fault for not killing Obamacare. Okay, you could report it credulously like that, but that's preposterous. Of course, the Democrats had no role in helping to defeat their own healthcare proposals. Why would they do that? That's ridiculous. It's not unfair to present that perspective and analysis on it. Now, look, that's a recent example, but I can give you a much more important example and how Ted Koppel and his ilk blew it. They were around during the Iraq war, and what did they say? Well, uh, George Bush says that there is a connection between Saddam Hussein and weapons of mass destruction, uh, and the Democrats largely say nothing. And I'll tell you why, and Ted, you're gonna flip out. It's because they're cowards. I know you would never say that, but what happened? They went on to say that lie over and over again, and you facilitated that. And then, more importantly, they insinuated that Saddam Hussein had something to do with 9-11. Again, the Democrats barely fought back. And what was the final result of that? So the media could have come in and go, wait, wait, wait. Weapons of mass destruction is an open question, okay? But on the connection to 9-11, Saddam Hussein did not do 9-11. That is not true. But Ted Koppel and the rest of the mainstream media didn't say that. They said the Republicans say this, the Democrats say this. I'm out of it, I'm neutral. I don't do opinion, I just tell you what the two sides said. Well, that's not doing your job. And when we went to war in Iraq, 70% of Americans believed that Saddam Hussein was personally responsible for 9-11. Why? The Republicans do better propaganda, the Democrats are miserable at getting the truth out. And then when the mainstream media calls it even, they go, okay, well, I presented to you the two sides. That's not your job. Your job is to tell us what is true and not true. And you didn't do that job. So now when people say, okay, I think this is my perspective, and the other guy says, this is my perspective, you say, no, no, don't even do that. Don't even do that, right? Now look, if sports reporting worked this way, they'd say, well, the Dodgers and the Yankees played. The Dodgers say they won, and the Yankees say they won. Well, I guess we'll never know. No, but the Yankees won. Oh, no, you hey, stop it with that opinion. You're, that's not opinion, that's a fact. But the mainstream media didn't deliver those facts. So is Sean Hannity the standard bearer for delivering facts to the American people through his perspective? No, you almost couldn't pick a worse example. But if you were going to pick a worse example, it'd be someone else on his network. But I don't want to kill off perspective. I don't want to kill off opinion. Because you didn't like the opinion. I don't like Sean Hannity's opinion. That is why I give a counter opinion. And that's how democracy is supposed to work. And if we leave it in the hands of the establishment press, who is so noble and worthy and knows what the truth is. And the truth is the government and their uh, the different parties involved in government are always right. The Republicans say this and I will never challenge them. The Democrats say that and I will never challenge them. The government says this, the Pentagon says that, and I will never challenge them, because that would be an opinion. No, it would be doing your job. So if you say, hey, you don't want opinions, great. We need objective journalism, we need Associated Press, we need Reuters. 
the right wing wants to tear down the media and destroy it so they could replace it with their propaganda. Progressives don't want to do that. We do the critique of the media so that we can strengthen the media. So give me actual objective journalism, I love it. That's fantastic, that's exactly what we want. Don't be neutral, be objective. And if you want to leave it at that, great, great. But don't stop other people from giving further analysis and perspective on top of that. Now that's a distinction that apparently is very hard for old school mainstream media to handle. And look, I grew up watching Ted Koppel too and I respect him in a in a lot of different ways and I think he's was a giant in the industry and he covered things oftentimes that the rest of the media didn't cover and that's why Nightline was the success that it was. But if you're looking at the overall landscape of the mainstream media and we you say we should just leave it at that and not provide any alternative voices, I vote hell no. So in a rare case, very rare case, score one for Sean Hannity. If you're a member of the Young Turks, you not only get the whole two hour Young Turks show on demand anytime you want ad free, but you also get so many other shows, old school, you'll love it. Aggressive progressive for guys who are true progressives. Now also Nerd Alert for gaming and tech, what to flick for movie reviews, you will love it. Check it out right now at tytnetwork.com slash join.